Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on Introduction to Data Science. In this video we will talk about the CRISP DM framework. And the CRISP DM framework, the DM, stands for data mining. So what is data mining? Data mining is a process where data is used to discover new information that can then be used for decision making. And you see from the definition that data mining is very close to data science. But the difference I want to make is that data science is a scientific field, which is broader than data mining. Data mining focuses on the process, the different techniques, the different steps that you have to take to solve a problem. And very often the problems that you try to solve with data mining are business problems. For example, the, we had the example of Walmart that tries to predict what customers will buy and it uses data for that. That's a typical data mining problem. And therefore, data mining is very specific to the field you are working in. A data mining problem for Walmart is different than a data mining problem for a big bank or an insurance company because the data mining the techniques, the statistical techniques you use are maybe the same, but you are working in a very different environment, very different um, field. However, there are many tasks in your data mining project that are the same even if you switch from one field to another. In the Walmart example, you have to do what we call data cleaning. You aggregate all kinds of data, but then you have problems, for example, with missing data, with data that is that seems not to be correct. You have to think, what should we do with this type of problems, errors in our data set? And the same holds for financial data sets. In the financial data sets, there are also inaccuracies, missing data. You need to do data cleaning. So although we have data mining projects that are very different for different fields, some parts of the projects are common, are the same, and maybe therefore we can learn from techniques used in Walmart, data science, pro data mining projects for Walmart, we can use what they know and apply it in a very different field such as financial pricing. CRISP DM stands for Cross Industry Standard Process for Data Mining. And this was invented in 1999, since in the early 19s, there was more and more interest in data mining and data science. So large companies across different sectors use their data to improve their business. However, in the beginning, there was little experience on how to do data science. There were, of course, people that were um, that could do statistics, predictive analytics, and they start to explore with these data sets of companies try to solve business problems, but it was very specific for each company. Each company had their own expertise, had their own type of data, and thought, well, this is what works for our particular case. However, several of these companies, starting with data mining, were very successful. So people saw very quickly, well, this data mining, the use of data to improve your business is maybe the way to go. And there was a sign that data science would become more and more dominant in business. Everyone started experimenting with data science and data mining to solve their business problems. But of course, this brought several issues, several risks, because the field was not that mature and people did not know well we are doing data mining, we are getting some results, but are we doing it correctly? Can we trust these results and can we change our business in function of these results? And different fields were trying different things and the question was, well, if something works for data mining in marketing, can we use this also for data mining in, for example, the financial industry or the pharmaceutical industry and so on? So that's why they created this CRISP DM consortium. Because the idea was to create a standard process, a standard process for data mining that was freely available, such that everyone who was doing data mining, who was facing issues, could look 
into the standard process, this quiz DM framework, to see if that can help to solve their problems with data mining. And in the CRISP DM framework, there are six different steps in a data mining project. And these different steps are the business understanding, the data understanding. So business understanding means what are we trying to solve? Data understanding is more what kind of information data do we have? There is the data preparation and the modeling part. That's really where the mathematics statistics is. We have the evaluation and the deployment. Evaluation means, well, is our project finished successfully? And if it is successful, if we say, well, this is something we can use, deployment means, well, how are we going to implement the results of our project into our business? And the idea was that if you do a data mining project in whatever industry you are working, you can always follow these different steps. So for each data mining project, you can think, okay, in my case, what is my business problem and can I understand my business problem? And then can I understand my data and so on? Let me start with explaining the six different steps in the CRISP DM framework. And after that, we look at the interactions between the different steps. So the first step is the business understanding. So you have to understand the situation and the project objective. So maybe you are a mathematician, a statistician, a data scientist, or a combination of these three. But if you are doing a data mining project for Walmart, or you are doing a data mining project for, for example, a financial company, it's a very different business and you have to understand the business. What are the goals of the project that you try to achieve with data science? And what you have to do is you have to translate this business objective into a data science objective. So the business objective is set by, for example, the managers of, your, of the company um, you are working for. Whereas you want to apply data science methods, meaning you want to do mathematics and statistics, apply models, so you have to translate that more qualitative business problem and the objectives into a data science problem, into something you can solve with data. And that's not an easy step. And then important, you have to say, well, what is my success criteria? What do we have to achieve so that we can say the project was or is successfully finished? Step two is the data understanding. So in step one, we try to understand what is the business we are working in, we are doing data science, so our start point is data. We want to solve that problem using data. We have to understand what data do we have. And we have to understand what data is collected and how can we collect data in this business. For example, if you do a um, project for Walmart, then you have data, everyday data, of people buying stuff in Walmart. Sometimes these shops like Walmart, they have special credit cards, so people can apply for a credit card, and then you can also follow, you have data about how people use that credit card. So that's data that you can use for solving a business problem, a data mining project for Walmart. But if you go to another business, it's maybe a different story on how they get their data. You have to understand how is data collected, what type of data, is available and how can we gather new data? If we say, well, in, in order to solve this problem, we need this and this data, can we get that data? Or can we think of ways to reach that goal of getting new data? Step three is the data preparation step. So we have our data to solve our business problem and that data is needed as an input into our machine learning statistical predictive models. But in most cases, you have the data, you have a predictive algorithm, you cannot directly use the data into this algorithm. You have to clean the data. You have to think how, what type of data is needed for this predictive model, and what type of data do we have. And if they do not match, you have to clean, you have to prepare the data such that it can be used in your, um, in your um, 
predictive model. And that is the, what we call the data preparation or the data pre-processing phase. Step four is the modeling phase. In the modeling phase, you are going to select models, you are going to build your own model, you are going to calibrate and test your model using the data that you have. And you clean and pre-process your data, so that's fine. Now you can really look at the modeling, the machine learning, AI maybe, all these type of models to uh, make predictions. And the idea is that you want, you have your data, it's nice and clean, and now you want to understand the data and find certain patterns or structures in the data that you can exploit for your business problem. And if you are um, from a more qualitative background, if you are a data scientist who is also having um, strong knowledge about mathematics and statistics, then in most cases you like the mathematical part of the data mining a lot. And that mathematical technical part is mainly here in the modeling phase. In the modeling phase, you are really doing the statistics, mathematics, and so on. The coding using with Python or R, it's in the modeling and also a little bit in the pre-processing phase. And then you see there are six phases in your data mining project. And the part where really you can use your technical skills is only in two steps out of the six, uh, six steps. So for data mining, for doing a data mining process, of course you need to be very technical because you have to go through this data preparation and pre-processing phase and you have to do the modeling step, but you need to have much more skills than just the technical skills. So that's step four, the modeling. That's really where the, um, the technical stuff is happening. Step five is the evaluation. So you have your model, you build your model, you get good results, your um, error numbers of your model, they look good, you try to predict things and that seems to be accurate, so your model looks good. In the evaluation phase, you want to go back to your business reality. You are going back to, okay, what is the business we are working in and what is the problem we are trying to solve? And then the question is, well, did we solve our problem? Maybe you can have a good model, but if you look at your business problem, you say, well, actually, it's not that useful for our business problem. We cannot really use the information that comes out of our model. In the evaluation phase, we check, um, did we reach our business objective? And we need to determine, well, can we say that the project was successful? Then lastly, the deployment phase, that's step six. So if we concluded in step five in the evaluation phase that our model was successful, that we were able to solve the business problems, in the deployment phase, we want to use the model. That can be that we determined what um, are the important, what, are, what will be in the near future the goods in Walmart that are in high demand. If we make predictions for that, then in the deployment phase we have to say, well, we actually have to buy these products. We have to change a bit the products in our store that we, have, that we can have more of the products that we need. Um, so we have to use the model. Um, what else is in the deployment phase is your report writing, where you say, well, this is the solution to our problem. It could also be you have to build tools, websites, apps, where you use your model. For example, maybe you build a model that can help people to decide what type of investment they have to do. Right? So you can say, well, if I have information about someone, if I can follow someone's uh, behavior for a while, then I can decide, well, this is the best investment for you, then maybe you have to build an app such that people can actually use that information, that people can actually use your knowledge, your data mining project to make investment decisions and to actually buy certain stocks or funds or whatever. That's the deployment phase. It's really the use of your model. The CRISP-DM framework is not a linear framework. And with linear, I mean... It's not the case that we start in step one, then we go to step two, then to step three, all the way to step six, and then finish. No, we always start in, in step one, in the business understanding. We always have to start there. If we are finished with step one, we go to the data understanding phase. But 
if we finish step two, it's not the case that we always move to step three. It can happen that we have the data understanding that we say, well, in this situation, this is the data that we have. And then we can say, well, in that case, we cannot solve our business problem. The business problem is set by managers of the companies that have a certain objective that they want to reach. And they say, well, for this objective, we have to solve this problem. But data is more of a technical nature. And you have to align these two. And maybe the data scientist will tell the managers, well, what you try to solve, we cannot solve with this type of data. So either we have to change the business question or we have to get more data or different type of data. So there can be an interaction between the business understanding and the data understanding. If you understand the data, we can go back to step one, from step two to step one, change our business understanding, stay, change the business objectives, say, well, with that type of data, we have to change what we try to do in this project and then go back to the data understanding. So we can go from step one to step two and maybe we have to go back to step one. And that's what I mean with that the CRISP-DM is not a um, linear process. Same happens in the data preparation and the modeling steps. So if you do the data preparation, you can go to the modeling of your, uh, of your problem. So you can employ machine learning algorithms but maybe you want to if you do your modeling you say well I want to try different models and then at some point you see well actually the data for this type of model is not good enough and you have to go back to your data preparation do a bit more data pre-processing in order that your data is ready to use in a new type of model for example so there is interaction between data preparation and modeling if you are at the end of your project you are in step five the evaluation phase then it can happen that we say well that business question we couldn't really solve it so it means that if we are in the evaluation phase we conclude that our project was not successful then of course we do not go to step six we're not going to implement a model that does not really work but what we can do we from the evaluation phase we can go back to the business understanding we can say well our project was maybe not successful. We did not reach our business objective, but we learned something from the project. We learned about the data that we have, about the models. Maybe we did our modeling and we could not really solve the business problem that we, that we started with, but maybe we found something else in the data, something else. We said, well, we are not looking for that, but this is also very interesting. So based on that information, maybe the project was not not successful but we learned something and we can use this new knowledge to go back to the business understanding phase change our business understanding change our business question and start the process over again and here i have an overview of the crisp dm framework that also shows the different interactions between the different steps in the framework if every step is successful you start in step one, the business understanding, you go to step two, three, four, five, six, and finish. Of course, every time you reach step six, your process, your project is finished. Once you implement your model, well, you're done. However, you see also these interactions between the business understanding and the data understanding, between the data preparation and the modeling. It can happen that you have to go back and forth a few times in order to um, to go to the next step. And then you have in the evaluation phase where it can happen that you have to go back all the way to step one, the business understanding, because you can improve your business understanding, you can get new business questions and start the process over again.